Welcome to the map Forts of Aizen for a video commentary for BFME 1 on the page 2.22 between Gondor and Rohan. So there is a specific reason why this fight is happening right now and the reason is simple. Basically Theodin was super upset that Gondor didn't help them during the fight on the Westworld and for that reason he's now gathering all the possible and available Rohirrim to go to war to the White City. Because that's a fight we have never seen in the films and we need to always imagine a scenario why this could eventually happen in the Lord of the Rings. So the peasants are marching forward, but remember, in a one-on-one -on -one situation against the mighty trained professional soldiers, they don't stand a chance. Keep going. Okay, in the meantime, the Hobbit was looking to find some peasants, but he won't be able to find anything. Also, the Hobbit from Rohan is leading forward, Mary. In a 2v2, you can't fight this because you have the block formation, you know. With the block formation, the soldiers will m become more tanky. They lose movement speed, but the movement speed doesn't really matter anything when you fight while standing still. We get to see more peasants coming from the farms. One of them is going to go through the top side. One of them is going through the middle. And one of them is going to capture this one at the bottom left side of the map. So far, a great start for Gondor. Very good start. And also, the host player of this game is Gondor, which is also very important. So he's gonna bring one more peasant to this location, but I think the soldier is retreating and um, Rohan wasn't paying attention that much. The only way you can fight this is if you outnumber your opponent big time. So in a 2v2 situation you lose, so because of the quality differential, you need to make sure that your quantity is way better than your opponent. And that's the strength of Rohan. Because you have the chance to recruit multiple peasants from the farms and you can easily turn the 2v2 into a 2v4, 2v5 situation in which you can either fight the soldiers and beat them or you just ignore them and go for the settlement instead. So both of these options can actually work pretty decently. The farm is going to be under attack now with the Mary being quite low. The Pepin is microing, hitting, running, hitting, running, cancelling the outside animation to make sure that you are able to attack way more faster. And the one peasant shouldn't be able to destroy this. That's why you need always multiple peasants. Here, again, a 1v1 situation. Again, the same situation. Soldiers should be easily able to defend this, no problemo. Yes, he's bringing many more peasants, but the micro and the gathering is kind of questionable, you know? The first knight of Gondor has approached the battlefield. That's very good. The Rohirrim pretty much at the same time. Rohirrim are cheaper compared to the Gondor knights. And also the stable of Rohan is cheaper compared to the stable of Gondor. For that reason, Gondor's goal is to defend those settlements outside, that's very important. Otherwise, you will have less food bonus and your knights will be delayed, you know. And time management is very important. The creep here at the bottom side will be taken down by Gondor. This one will be taken down by Rohan, that's pretty good. Gondor can actually even creep this now after dealing with the peasants. His hobbit is level 2 and his soldier almost level 2 as well. Actually, almost both of them. The creep secured by Rohan, no problemo. The same also at the bottom side to the Gondor. So far, so good. The game slowed down a bit, you know. At this point of the game, it's all about creeping, getting power point advantage. And then it's gonna be a fight for the map control. Later on, Rohan has to make a choice. Do I go for the end mood, end rush? Do I go for heroes for the lead game? Rohan, even though you have like the less available spots in your castle, you have the most diversity as a faction. The map is looking very good for Gondor, that's actually pretty impressive. And he's also creeping a lot, right? He's gonna take this creep at the top right, this creep in the middle. So that's gonna be his third creep. Rohan was able to creep this one at the top side, that's gonna be the second creep for Rohan. But I believe Rohan can actually contest this creep too, too at, the bottom, uh, at the middle. Oh, that was very close actually. The creep now should be taken down by Rohan, no problemo. Imagine he steals it. No, he didn't. But the money, 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 money. Oh, nice, micro. He was able to steal one part of the treasure. That's very good. Okay, so here with a level 3 soldier, with a level 3 hobbit, that means Rohirrim can't actually approach this. The hobbit will actually hit like a truck. But during all this time, Gondor is creeping offensively the ward layer at the bottom left side of the map, which is pretty good. So he was in total able to, to take 3 creeps. That's pretty good against Rohan. Power wise we have two power points for Gondor and one and a half power point for Rohan. He's gonna go for Elma, the horse lord of Rohan. 
His spear throw is always one-shotting the Knights of Gondor. And when you do this on repeat every 25 seconds, you can actually get him to level 4, which is a major power spike for Rohan army, because he will give 70% more damage to the nearby Rohirrim and also Rohirrim archers. Oh, save the level 3 soldier, man. Don't lose them. The map control is looking good for Rohan. That's pretty good. Gondor is a full base by now. Going for Forge Bleeds in Heavy Armor. Rohan is still an empty spot in the base. He has also Theoden upon the field. That's good. Oh, beautiful trample. Finishing off the soldier before they could make it to the White City. So the reason why Rohan is actually map control is simple. Gondor has only three Knights of Gondor. And Rohirrim, there are four of them. So you have one more Rohirrim than your opponent has Gondor Knights. And for that reason, you can always dodge the fight and use the number advantage you got to just avoid fighting and go for the settlements instead, you know? There is a Merry blocking the settlement. That means Gondor can't capture it. Theoden is chilling solo. Theoden King stands alone, actually. <laughs> He's actually standing alone in this one. Okay, Merry, uh, Pippin is going to also make it to the spot, eventually Cloak. That means also Rohan won't be able to capture the settlement anytime soon. Rohan has not that much money. So I wouldn't expect an end mood anytime soon. And you can't fight this. Even though Theodian's leadership is better than Forge Bleeds or Heavy Armor. But in this situation, the Knights of Condor have both Heavy Armor and Forge Bleeds. For that reason, he will always be able to win the fight. Spear throw, boom. Level 2. Just like that. I mean, you see, Rohirrim are everywhere. Eomam is pretty annoying. Because he can always disengage. You can't really kill him with your knights. Unless he's not paying attention to it. Rohirrim will make it to the well. Armory is up on the field for Rohan. But Gondor in the meantime is reclaiming some of the map control. That's pretty good. Power point wise, we have two power points for Rohan. And almost three power points for Fishy, the gunner player. And he has enough power points to go for Alvin Wood. And even go for the Gun of the White after that, you know. As the blacksmiths are leveling up to level 2, we will also get more money. And he has only 1500 right now, but he will get there eventually. Beautiful. So Rohan in the mid game will most of the time will have actually the upgrades way later compared to Gondor. But once Rohan has upgrades, he can easily fight this because he has double support for the Rohirrim, Theodin, and later on also Eoma, who by the way now is almost level 3. Good situation for both the players. But I think Gondor is gonna get eventually stronger. Gandalf is a hero that is quite difficult to deal with. In order to deal with Gandalf, he actually needs like a huge army of Rohirrim archers. Alvin Wood was placed by Gondor. The, the way you can see whose land this is, is because of the... You see this shining? This blue shining aura? That's always the color of the player, right? That's a blue Gondor, that's why you see the blue. But in the future, you will actually also make it so each land, each country, I mean each faction, sorry, <laughs> you know, Gondor, Rohan, and Eisen Mordor will have a different um, visual land. So because right now, Gondor and Rohan are using the same land, and Mordor and Eisen are using the same land, but in the future, there will be four unique lands for each unique faction. Eoma, the Horse Lord of Rohan, and Turing King stands alone. Level 1. The farm is going to be destroyed in a second. Forge Bleeds is just making them deal heavy damage. Money-wise, we have almost 5,000 in the bank for Gondor. Very soon, there will be a Gandalf on the field. You know, again, a hero that requires a lot of stuff to be dealt with. Rohan, in the meantime, going for the Forge Bleeds. Banner is also very important. Quite cheap upgrade. Very eff effective. Spear throw. Level 3 now. Beautiful. So he needs only one level. And he will get this, you know. You can just keep chasing the Knights of Gondor and use it whenever it's available to just get free experience over and over again. We have the new farm. Okay, in a fight, Rohan will not win this. He has to use heal to disengage. He has no Forge Bleeds on him. And also shields are required later on. Because the shields from the stable will also give them increased armor against Knights. And again, look this. Kaboom! Half a level needed, boys. But there is going to be a wizard very soon. Gandalf. The Grey. Recruit a wizard armed with mighty magical powers. What a badass description. Now, the second Elma gets level 4, knights can never ever fight the Rohirrim again. That's not possible. I mean, Rohan is a rhythm faction that is based on the strength of the horses. 
and with multiple sports Theorin, Ilma, and then you have later on also Glorious Charge, you know. So pretty powerful. Ooh, Rohirrim are winning this. Heal is gonna be used. Rohirrim is gonna still win this. Gondor is not paying attention. Ooh, what a beautiful catch. And one knight has been taken down. That's dope. Okay, Gandalf the White has approached the battlefield. Again, a hero that is basically a melee hero, but also range at the same time, you know? Easter Light is a, you know, click and use. No skill shot. It can't miss. You have your Lightning Sword, which is a heavy damage against anything. Flying heroes, heroes, units, even structures. I mean, what you could do here, right, is when you throw Spear with Elma, you want to put Theorin close to Elma. That means he can share experience with his nephew. History, boom, uh, almost, if you got one shot, one opportunity, and Theoden has to go back to well, go back to the shadow, I mean, again, I think it's kind of not good to use it on a target that you know you can't finish, right, it's better to just kill stuff with it, so if you know you can't finish the hero, you can always use it against units too, right, that's a possibility, now Gondor is taking over the map, does he have shields, he does, okay, Rohan has no shields, but he's gonna get some. Also going for the archer range level 2 for the fire arrows. I mean, the goal of Gondor, I mean, Rohan is to always avoid Gandalf now. Until you are ready to face him. You can't fight him. But you will be able to very soon. Because Eoma is gonna get level 4 now. Use spear throw. There we go. Beautiful. One more spear throw needed, and level 4 is going to be unlocked. But again, a massive power spike for the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers. 70% more damage. That's crazy, if you think about this. And the Hobbit is still cloaking here. By the way, you could use Gandalf to kind of clear the Hobbit. I mean, the Hobbit is now moving, but he was blocking the settlement for... Since the beginning of the game, basically. But now he's going to die. <laughs> Mary, Dude, this Gandalf doesn't like Hobbits. Gandalf doesn't like Hobbits. Very close level 4. Very, very close. Oof. I mean, Gandalf never used the Lightning Sword, though. Map control is looking very good for Gondor. Not a single farm outside for Rohan. That's bad. Ooh, what a fight. Ooh, look at him. Look, he is trying to spear throw him, but he's running in circles. Watch, 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 watch. He can't, he can't, he can't, he needs to use heal. The horse is running in circles. Oh my, now he's gonna use heal too. What a beautiful, oh my god. <laughs> what a play by the Gondor player. Beautiful. Basically, when you run in circles, uh, the hero has to have a clear vision to you. To, to, you know, use the spear or whatever. And when you run in circles, he can't really use it, you know? It's like, that was a really good play by Gondor. Holy very well done. Almost level 6, Gandalf. Rohan is struggling. Kind of poor. Not that much money. 3.6 for Gondor. 85 for Rohan. <laughs> he needs to now invest 800 for each Rohirrim archer. And in order to give them, you know, heavy armor, forge, not forge bleeds, heavy armor, fire arrows, and banner carrier, you need to actually invest around about 2,000 for one Rohirrim archer. And you need, like, not one of them. You need, like, five, six of them to actually be properly able to threaten Gandalf. And that will be time consuming. In order to win this game fast, Gondor has to be acting fast. You know, go for the siege, get the outpost, make fire borrow, go for a workshop, make trebuchet, and siege as soon as possible before Rohan is ready. The farm is ready. The farm is ready. Okay. Beautiful. Beridamark faction. Oh, be careful here with the Rohirrim. Level 2 against level 2. Oh, never mind. I was expecting a gate rush. He's gonna close the gate and build a Poston gate now. Run. You see that's annoying, you know? When there is a Gandalf chasing you, the best thing you can do is split up. Because he can only chase one of them. Simultaneously, Theorin is gonna be John, John, John. Terran King lies alone on the water. 
Emma is like, okay, I'm now the real king. I'm the, I'm the new king, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but he's level 4. That's something. You need, you need to revive theory. And luckily, he was only level 1. It's going to cost you only 600. The more levels you have, the longer it gonna, it's going to take to revive you. And also, the more money you need to obviously invest into this, you know? So, Rohan, only one farm outside. That's not very really good. There comes the lightning sword. Beautiful catch. And basically, Gandalf is doing what he's supposed to do. Farming power points and gaining momentum for the Gondor faction. Market please coming up for Gondor. Tower guards moving to the outpost. Finally. And what I would like to do is go for combos. Archers firepower, you know. Because tower guards are good against regular Rohirrim, but they are not that great against Rohirrim archers with this much leadership. How much money Rohan has? Um, not much. You know, he still needs a lot, right? He needs Aragorn eventually, right? He will return now as the king of the Rilmark. Ooh, that's the worst case scenario. Gandalf is waiting in front of the gate. Come at me, bro. The Hobbit is cloaked here. Oof, that's gonna be a big one. Never mind. Okay, beautiful split, but that's gonna be a big one. Gaboom! Yeah! Okay, now here, my advice to you, when you know you can't kill him, I think it's not good to focus him. Always try to kill some knights in exchange, because Gandalf's auto attack is not very threatening, right? What makes him powerful are the powers he has. When they are on, on cooldown, Gandalf is not going to be that impactful anymore. He's back to the beast, healing up. No money for the upgrades, I believe. Yeah, he's poor. Going for the siege. Well, in statue. Getting some traps up on the field very soon, and the siege will finally begin. But it might be a little bit too late for this one, to be honest with you. Gondor is 1400. Getting more Rohirrim archers up on the field. Gaining some map control back, that's really good and important too. You have almost level 7. And he can now rotate, there is no defense actually that will stop him from going for the well. Oh, bad trample into the tower guards, I believe he was not paying attention to this. Ooh, we missed the blast, the Rosinho. Ooh, that's gonna be horrible. Boom, 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 boom. Gandalf the White, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna get chunked a little bit. Never mind, he's still full HP. But again, he used all his abilities beside Easter Light. That's why he's always returning now. There is no need to keep fighting because Rohirrim have more leadership than you do. This land is actually from uh, Rohan. I believe Gondor used the land and Rohan was covering the land. You can see the orange animation around the well. This one is, for example, from the Gondor player. That's how you know in the team fights, in the team games, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, whose land uh, you are fighting on, you know? From your ally, from your enemy, and so on. Quickly now. Okay. Traps are under attack. Oof, that's 105 resources for killing them, though. That's why you need some protection beside tower guards. You need to actually make some combos that can shoot down the Rohirrim Arches because Rohirrim Arches are very vulnerable against fire arrows. So you're having some rangers with tower guard combination in there. It's super difficult to deal with. Beautiful Easter light killing bunch of Rohirrim. Okay, Gond R Rohan is not that rich, but I think he kind of slowed down the progressing of Gondor by destroying the trebuchet. And by the time Gondor is finally ready to approach him, I think Aragorn might be on the field, you know? Gondor has full map control. Marketplace, let me take a look into this. He has already Iron Ore, you can see the animation. Going for the Grand Harvest. And also, this is very important and super underrated, by the way. It's only 500, and you, you get 50% of the money back from the structures you lose when, you, when they get destroyed, you know? That's very good. Oof, the damage, though. The damage, though. The only thing I'm, I'm worried about is that the uh, Rohirrim, I mean, the King of Rohan, is only level 1, you know? He's very squishy level 1, and he still needs 3 full levels to unlock the Glorious Charge, which is a very important ability to be unlocked in this matchup. Firestone incoming. Double trap. Very good map for Gondor. We'd like, we'd like to see it. It's gonna be gone. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Rohan is going for Aragorn, and he has also the power points he needs to turn him into the Aragorn... Elisar, the king of the west. Oof, be careful here. Ganav is on the hunt. Almost level E2. Run, you fools. 
you could technically you could fight on the Alvin Wood because Alvin Wood will make you get more tanky and I believe on the Alvin Wood the blast won't kill you anymore in one shot right and sending them two by two is a mistake you want to always split them up a little bit okay now it's gonna be a 2v2 fight let's take a look into this I think Rohirrim are high leveled that means they should be able to win this level 4 Rohirrim but they both kind of insecure about the fight and disengaging now the siege will begin boys the siege will begin take this area boom bam chum but aragon is on the field boys don't you fear aragon is here he's going inside the jeans can he do it aragorn the king is gonna use the bleed master Ooh, bad shot Theoden is dead, I believe. Yeah, Theoden is dead. Boromir is here to knock down Aragorn on the, on the ground. There comes the blast. Never mind, he's gonna cancel it. That's a still a huge army. Aragorn is fighting. Moonwalking. Now, ooh, he's gonna get chunked a little bit. But I think he's fine. Aragorn is super, super tanky hero. But Boromir is kinda countering him. Power guard in the melee fight. Boromir approaching. Level 3. Looking for a blast. He's gonna get chunk, 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 chunk. Ooh, close, 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 close. Does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal from the spell, spell book. That's why he's so greedy. But Theoden has been taken down in a second. In the same situation again, the tower guards are gonna feed some power points to the Rohan. And remember, when there is Aragorn nearby, they will also level up faster because Aragorn gives you 50% combat experience and that's able to stack with the 25 combat experience percentage from Ilma. So you get 75% faster levels and each level will make you deal way greater damage. And that's kind of crazy. A level 10 Rohira Marcha can just one tap. Loki, one tap Gandalf. And that's not even close, baby. But Boromir, he's saying, one does not simply into Gondor. And he's gonna try his best to defend those trebuchet. That's his main mission. Aragorn is way stronger than Boromir, but Boromir has a passive that is able to knock down units on the, on the ground. Power guards, tanky, but not tanky enough. Too much firepower we are talking about. They will have to disengage. Okay, so Aragorn, I mean, he has basically Grand Harvest on these farms. That's why he's so much making so much money. Ooh, now exposed trebuchet. There comes the cloud break. Bombo, combo, boom. Check a look, a look, a look. <laughs> oh my god. Now there comes the lightning sword. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Heal. Elma is down. Oh my god. So close. He's gonna be able to survive too. Oh my god. He's going to the limit. Beyond the limits, by the way. That was a horrible fight for Rohan. He lost his Eoma. He lost a bunch of Rohirrim marches. And I think he never killed Boromir either. So he was able to destroy some of the trebuchet. But that's all about it. Gandalf was barely able to survive. But look at the minimap, boys. It's looking so good, actually, for Gondor. You know? Very good. Beautiful. Oh my god, what a game. Okay, Eoma is going to take you a long time. Two minutes. And also, you need to invest a thousand. More about the two minutes, which... It's basically the time period you can't really fight Gandalf. It's a very important leader we are missing. Uh, Theoden is still only level 1. That's very unfortunate. Gandalf is level 8 though. That's very good. Boromir almost level 4. That's gonna unlock his leadership for 60% more damage for the nearby uh, troops. Which means he will give also leadership to the horses. To the tower guards too. Faramir could also be very good. Faramir is actually very good against heroes, right? He's warning arrow, dealing a great amount of damage to heroes like Eoma, Theoden, even to Aragorn when there is no Blade Master. Okay, one more shot and the part of the wall will be broken. Rohan has a huge army at the top side of the map. A Rohirrim, Archer without any upgrades. He's kind of broke. He's trying to get some map back. But here, now Gondor has the chance to send in those two Knights of Gondor, one of them even being level 6, inside the beast, right? And he can deal great amount of economical damage by destroying this level 3 farms and he should be doing this but obviously he doesn't know what we know that's the vision control of Gondor he's not able to see what is inside the base of Rohan he's not able to see that but he's uh, he's gonna break now the second part of the fall 
I think he's gonna break in total three parts of the wall, and repairing the parts of the wall will cost you in total 2,200 each, right? And if you wanna repair all of that, you need to invest over 6,000 to do that. Aragon is gonna be sent forward. We have now the traps a bit more split up, and I like this positioning, but again, there is no firepower. So you need to hit him to charge into your tower guards, which won't be happening. And the traps will feed lots of power points to the Rohan player too. Boromir get level 4, that's very good. The level 6 might get away, will get away. Oh my god, he got away, actually. And now there is no trebuchet. That means the Rohirrim archers can actually... Oh, lightning sword, he's going to insta-cancel it. He should not cancel it, in my opinion. Look at them glowing, though, bro. That's kind of crazy glow. He then finally got level 2. You get also 14 for killing those tower guards from the outlaw leadership from Eoma. Aragorn get level almost 6, and now they can even commit to the outpost. There is nothing that can shoot. Besides one Warcher, look at the damage from the Ranger. I'm telling you, boys. Rangers, if poor leadership and Stichu can actually melt everything. Arag this, look this. Boom, 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 boom. You see the damage? You see the damage? Ooh, he has to use heal. Look at this crazy DPS. But also Aragorn, I mean, uh, Ganoff can't really approach this. The Siege Warrior has been destroyed, he can rebuild it obviously, but he will lose the production speed bonuses, which basically means if it's if a building is level 2 or level 3, it will produce the units or siege weapons way faster. Okay, Theoden is level 3 though, that's becoming more scary now. When he's getting level 4, the Glorious Charge is going to be quite impactful. Um, Gondor is finally deciding to make some of the archers, rangers, to place them inside the Citadel, that's very important. Almost 6 power points for Gondor and almost 7 power points for Rohan, but he never chose yet the Ents allies or also not the, see it, the Cloud Break. He needs a bit more power points for that. And Gandalf never got killed so far. He's quite tanky now because each level will make them also get more HP, right? But it's a scary army of Rohirrim archers, boy. Level 5 Rohirrim. You know, super, super scary. Level 5 almost. Rohirrim Archer. Demolish this so your rangers can shoot. Beautiful. Oh my god. I'm telling you, man. And now he's GC2. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my god. The damage is kind of nutty, man. Holy guacamole. Oof, oof, oof. Cloudbreak, they can't get away now. Cloudbreak is slowing them big time, and he should be able to farm so many power points from this fight all alone. Boromir got one tapped. What can men do against such reckless hit? Will Theorin revenge work against Gondor? He's chasing Faramir, but Faramir should be able to get away. There's no problem. The good thing for Gondor is he had the whole map for a very long time. It means he should be able to revive all his heroes. Boromir, Faramir, I mean Boromir and Ganov will be revived and he's st still doing a good job on repeat using the Knights of Gondor to make sure that he is the one who's controlling the map. We, ride for the glory of Gondor. we fight for the glory of Gondor, boys. I mean Rohan could repair, oh that's what I'm talking about, you see? He's going for a sneak attack but luckily Rohirrim are prepared for this. There are two Rohirrim archers in the base just waiting for the Gondor to make such a move. He might go for the end mood. Um, he's gonna go for the end mood from this location, which is something I don't really like. There is a level 10 Rohirrim Archer, by the way. I think that's the one who killed um, Ganov. Lord, that's gonna hit like a truck, boys. I'm telling you. The end mood from this location would be better. Way better. He's making too many tower guards, but I think the real threat are not the regular Rohirrim. I think the real threat are the Rohirrim Archers. They never will trample your tower guards in the first place. Ooh, okay. He's going inside the jeans, demolishing the structure so Gondor can't get power points from it. That's a huge army. Holy guacamole. If you can destroy this level 3 farms, it's going to be huge, actually. But I think you can't. You will damage it a bit, but he will end up losing the Knights of Gondor. Power points are rising to the sky from Rohan, too. Getting very close to the EOD special summon. The ends are going to war, boys. Now, the end mood here is kind of questionable because by the time they reach this area, they will have not much time left anymore. So they might still be able to break one or two parts of the wall, but I think they won't be able to deal that much damage, even though we improved the rock throw speed of the ends quite a lot. Bam, 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 bam. 
Bam, bam. And the damage is also very good, you see? Now they are picking up the rocks a bit faster from the ground. The animation between the shot and the recharge has been improved. It means ends are now just finally better siege weapons than they used to be in the past. So one part of the wall has been broken. Again, Gondor is going to just try it over and over again. But here in this situation, there are too many Rokira marches. It means Gondor can't really deal too much damage. The second part of the wall is going to be broken too. But I think that's going to be what ends can do. The archers dealing hella damage to the ends. The rangers with the statue leadership, they deal also 75% more damage. Two parts of the wall broken. And also we changed the burn animation of the ends. So they don't burn endlessly anymore. They have limited burn time. And you see? Before they were just burning until the very end. Paramir at the top of the wall, quite questionable. The damage from the Rohirrim Arches with this much leadership is kind of crazy and super scary. Think about this, 50% damage from Aragorn, 70% damage from Ilma, and 40% damage from Theodin. It's in total 160% damage, and this is without the glorious charge damage boost from another 20%. So that's kind of crazy. And again, each level they have will also increase their um, damage by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. So a level 10 Rohirrim Archer is basically like a level 10, 5 level 10 Legolas in terms of DPS, you know? That's kind of crazy. And I like the way that he has two groups of units. That's very good. Yanav is going to get chunked a little bit. 7 power points for Gondor, 6 power points for Rohan. There comes the Cloud Break. It means you can't outrun them. Um, but he's trying to gather together in one place. Remember, there is a Glorious Charge. It means you can't really fight this even with the Cloud Break. The Glorious Charge is so incredibly strong. Yanav can never approach this army, dude. The second he will ever get close to them, he will get one-shotted. I'm telling you. He will just one get one-tapped. And here, um, Rohan can play more carelessly. The reason being for this is the Glorious Charge, right? Whenever he's attempting to go for a visa plus on your army you can just stand where you are use glorious charge which will make your horses almost immune to damage and even if Gandalf can get a beautiful and amazing blast off it won't one shot or kill your army at all they will just get knocked down they will barely lose in hp and when they you know stand up again they just one tap Gandalf one tap him you know Paramir, the true defender of the White City. Gondor has the money to repair all parts of the wall. That's very good. Almost 8 power points for both the players. The power points are quite even now, as we are talking. Aragorn is a hero who is quite fast when he has under his sword. That's why he's able to keep up with the speed of the Rohirrim archers. Almost. Rohirrim are taking some of the map. That's good. Bunch of Knights of Gondor. Or Gondor. <laughs> And Gandalf is level almost 9. Dude, it would be amazing to see Gandalf getting level 10. The War of Power would be kind of crazy. Now, here's finally some combos. Three combos and one of the Ranger Battalions. It also double leadership. 50% armor from Gandalf. And 60% more damage from the Captain of Gondor, Boromir. And Faramir. Faramir is only level 4, but he's also very close to level 5. When you have triple leadership for the combos, they are also quite threatening. The only difference is they are only level 2, while the Rohirrim army is level 5, 6, 7, 8, even level 10, you know? And the King's Favor is going to be used on repeat to just make sure that you are always having the more experienced army. So I'm low-key certain that with your Glorious Charge you can actually fight this. Yeah, Aragorn, you can't really kill him. He's way too beefy. I mean, you can kill him, but it will just take you a long time. That's why you need to always avoid fighting him or avoid focusing him. Always in any skirmish fight, try to kill the stuff that you can kill very fast. In this situation, we are talking about Eoma Theorin being squishy heroes, which can be killed quite easily. Or you just focus down the Rohirrim archers, you know, if your combos. And you want to wait before you focus Aragorn that the Blade Master is not available anymore. With Blade Master, he's just way too tanky. Two big armies for Rohan. That's crazy and scary. Eight power points for Gondor. Almost. And Rohan is almost the same power points too. Okay, Cloud Break is going to be available for the next big fight, I'm assuming. Heal is available for both the players. So I think they are just loading up for a massive fight. Command point wise, they are almost filled. Gondor has not much left anymore. Rohan has even less left. 
So Rohan can make one more Rohirrim Archer, and that's all about it. He has 6,000. You could repair the wall. You can go for Gimli, who can always one-shot Trebuchet on top of the wall with the extra. And Gimli is level 3. The leap attack is also very good against units like combos. Because they are very immobile. You can jump on them, disable them, deal hella damage to them, you know. But this army, though, holy. You know, that's like the army you call when you play the good campaign Minas Tirith in Beef Me One, you know. The speech of Theodin. Spear shall be shaken, shields shall be splintered, a sword day, a red day, ere the sun rises. Rohirrim ready here. Rohirrim ready here. Okay, 244 out of 250 available command points, so he's kept. Um, I don't like that he has too many Rohirrim archers like this. He has only two normal Rohirrim, that's not enough. Not using the Glorious Charge, the ranges dealt great amount of damage, but the power points for Rohan are looking very good too. Nine power points in total. If Gondor doesn't demolish the structures, he doesn't. He will feed lots of power points to Rohan too. Almost AOD. Almost AOD. Gondor is still only at eight power points. At some point of the game, Gondor was having a huge power point advantage, but now it's the turn of the tides, boys. It's the turn of the tides. Okay, so now he has EOD. Um, in a dream world, you want to use EOD the way that you can get the most out of it, you know? So you want to go, go for the end mode here, siege him, force him to move all the army inside the castle for a defense, and then you use EOD to kill the army, right? And also the trebuchet on top of the wall. I, think, I don't think you need to fight him here. There is no need to fight this army because it's only one settlement they are protecting. Who cares about this? You want to bring the fight to them, right? That's, the, that's how you can get the most out of it. The Knights of Condor will be able to destroy this, no problemo. Yes, uh, Rokirim now rotating to the bottom side of the map. Condor is camping on this land because here he's the strongest. Faramir almost level 5, but even without Faramir leadership, he has 35% armor from the Alvin Wood, uh, plus 50% armor from, Arago, uh, from Gandalf, and 60% more damage from Boromir. That's a very tanky army, if nothing else. So it will take them a lot of, lot of time to kill them for the Rohirrim Archers with this much armor leadership. Entmode is building up. Level 5 Knights of Gondor against level 2. Rohirrim, the knight should be easily able to win this. Avoid fighting this. Oh, but he's gonna summon EOD here. Why? I mean, yeah, he will kill Faramir, Boromir, all of that shenanigans. But why? Like, Gandalf is approach, uh, getting away, obviously. No problem for Gandalf. Okay. Destroying the trebuchet on top of the wall. That's not bad either. And the ends are going to war. And Gandalf has to be careful, though. You don't want to ride into this army. You just need to make a post and get here or something. Ooh, what? Very questionable. I think he didn't pay attention. <laughs> That's the only logical explanation. Which has happened there, you know? Yeah, and I've got one tapped. That's how you deal with the guy. Does he have power points? He has almost EOD too, the Gondor player. Now the EOD on this army is going to be so crazy fascinating, dude. It's gonna summon the ends, going for double siege from double location. The last march of the ends begins. Boom! Shot! Boom! 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 boom. Oh my god, the cloud break AOD combination! When you think about this, this combination is kind of crazy, man. Because cloud break will slow them by a lot, and then they can't really get away. Aragorn is gonna die too, even though he's the heir of Gondor, but it doesn't matter. AOD is no, not from him, it's from Gondor. And holy, that was a big L. And now there comes the Eagle special summon from Gondor to kill the remaining heroes from Rohan. This is so unfortunate, bro. <laughs> this is so... Yeah, you see, that's the lead game um, Gondor power. Because the AOD summon was so incredibly impactful that he killed so much stuff out of it. You know what I mean? The Eagles are going to war. Here you want to prioritize to destroy the statue and then the well. Um, but Rohan is now using Cloud Prick to counter the move of the Gondor to make the Gondor Knights lose their armor leadership. 
Imagine if Gondor didn't lose the Gandalf there, you know? Imagine if Gandalf was around while this is happening. This push all alone would be able to finish off the Rohan castle. Luckily, Rohan has double outpost control, right? That's really good. So he has some, some, so somewhat of the money to replace the three major heroes he lost. But again, even now, he has kind of money struggle. Rohirrim summon will be used from Gondor to destroy the stable of Rohan. It means very less production speed. So he needs to rebuild the stable, but again, it's going to take him a long time, you know? Gondor has one, two, three, four farms outside. It's going to get more. Ganav is being revived very soon. I mean, not very soon. It's going to take you three minutes and 20 seconds. It's a long revive time for a high-level hero like Ganav. Rohirrim killing stuff, but again, it the well they're regenerating over and over again. Okay, level 6, level 7, and level 8. Again, also the 3 minutes and 20 second mark, just like Arag uh, Gandalf, here one hero. Again, the stable will be destroyed one more time. And this is slowing him down so much, you know? Level 3 farm, holy, that's so bad. The outpost will be taken down. Now the heroes are returning to the battlefield, Elma and also Theorin. I mean, in the super late game, Gondor has the best power points in the game, right? You have like one additional summon to your opponent. And eagles in most situations are also better than ants. Ants are good when it comes to siege and stuff, but eagles are just hero killers, you know? And they are flying heroes at the, at the first place, and flying is like an ability by itself, you know what I mean? I hope he didn't derive Aragorn from this location. If he did, it would be really bad. Okay, he didn't. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, again, the problem here is that... You know, Rohan never repaired the broken parts of the wall in the first place. That means Gondor can always do what he's just doing on repeat. So, because there is no broken... That is no okay, Rohan is going to summon the elves for defense, but Aragorn is here. Aragorn is going to just crush you. I think it's a wrong thing to focus down the citadel. There is no need to do, that, to do that. I would always prioritize to destroy this level 3 farms. Three of them. If you do this, Rohan will be so broke. I mean, he's already broke, but he will be more broke if you do this. Because he needs to build them up. They will only give 16 instead of 20, 25. And then he needs to also buy on them one more time the Grand Harvest. Which, again, will cost you more money. In time. So, EOD is going to be available very soon for Rohan. Maybe he will go inside the base of Gondor and try to finish him off. Gandalf the White approaches. Cloudbreak from Gondor to win this fight over here. Remember, Cloudbreak is slowing you down. It means you can't really disengage. And the armor reduction makes it so you can always fight back. But at the, at the statue, it's a different story. Here they have also more damage. Here it's going to be used. And I think Rohan should be able to win this fight. And Gondor, knowing this, will retreat. Uh, Rohan's army is not very, very, very big. And there are too many Knights of Gondor. This Gondor player is spamming Knights of Gondor everywhere. Everywhere. And the gate is broken. That means he can just go inside the jeans. And that's going to be exactly his plan. Does he have EOD? He does have EOD, boys. But only one Rohirrim Archer. What's one Rohirrim Archer going to do? He's going to summon the EOD to kill the Knights of Gondor. You also need to destroy the trebuchet. Aragorn is here. More Rohirrim are coming. Gandalf is trapped, 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 trapped. Gandalf is dead. Gandalf is dead, boys. The Glorious Charge missed a lot of stuff because he sent in the first guy first. Um, I mean, he only went in with one Rohirrim march at the first place. You want to bring those heroes to this Rohirrim. But in the meantime, Gondor is going for a counterattack to the counter base. So it will be an eventual base swap. He's bringing down so many knights. What can the one Rohirrim do against such reckless heat? Galbraith is going to be used to reduce their armor a little bit. But it's still a 1v4 situation. And Gondor can just ignore this Rohirrim and go for the structures instead. In the meantime, Rohan is about to finish off the castle. Aragorn hitting like a truck. EOD will be summoned from Gondor to kill the Rohirrim. Aragorn never used the Blade Master. With the Blade Master, he could actually fight this back, but he never chose to do that. The beast from Gondor has been destroyed. In the meantime, Gondor is also trying to destroy the castle of Rohan. Remember, they have both one outpost each, but this outpost is being attacked by this knight of Gondor. This outpost is about to be attacked by this Rohirrim, but there is one level 5 knight of Gondor to defend this. The castle of Gondor 
and Rohan will both fall. This outpost has no defense. This outpost has the defense. Nobody has the money to buy the castle back. And once the structure is falling, the game is gonna be over and Gondor is gonna be the winner, boys. Oh my god, what a game, boys. What a, what a, what a game. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did enjoy, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.